I'm not CC Valencia, the radio person. I, I'm CC Valencia, the Christian who happens to be a radio personality. It's 935 Gator Hip Hop back in the day. That's DJ Vital. DJ Vital.1200, okay? It's like seeing how magic works. <laughs> <laughs> I met Snoop Dogg, and now, like, Snoop's like a family friend now. It's crazy, right? My mom is. You know, eight strokes, but she's still doing good. My mom's from Compton, so I can show you. I'll get a random text message, and guess what she'll tell me? They not like us. Ah. I said, okay, Rita. <laughs> oh my God, the girl from Compton, I used to go visit her dad in Tehachapi, <laughs> right? In a regal, like right. on food stamps. Right. I'm sitting at Jennifer Lopez's house. This is so crazy. I feel bad that I put my work over them for 10 years. In this business, you have to learn how to be tough. You've yeah. got to learn how to be tough. You cannot go into these communities and expect them to pay for your concert tickets yeah. if you can't go in the community and help them. This is why we got to be honest. There's somebody right now that is more hungry, is willing to do whatever they can to take our seats right now. So I weigh the options. That one free gig that I gave them, I just walked out with five big pain gigs. Mm. It was worth it. It was worth it. I feel like you gave me so much game. I'm Did I really? Oh my yeah, god, I yes! I, like I should pay for this. No, 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 no! So no, 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 no. It's called Each One Teach One. Each One Lemons, you know what it is, man. We are here today at 93.5 K-Day, hey. the home of CC Valencia. Let's go. And we have CC Valencia herself, a legend, somebody that we all grew up listening to um, and that we all admire and love. And I'm so honored to be here with you today, and I'm grateful for you being here with us, so thank you so no, much. No, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. The fact that you said we all grew up, not that old, no, 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 no. but you know I'm what I'm saying. <laughs> That's right, you that young. That's right. So I, I'm really um, grateful for you being here. You know, one of the, the first things I wanted to talk to you about is when I was just getting started in the entertainment industry. Um, I was emailing people. I was fresh out of jail. I was very young. I was about 20 years old. This is before I was successful. And I was emailing everybody that I could find their email on. And I found your email. I emailed about 400 people. And what? You were one of four people that actually responded to me. When no I way! Aww. And it was so much. It was so encouraging back then. So I was really I appreciate that. that. No, thank um, you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Especially awesome. No and now look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Now look at you. I'm doing all right now. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah, I just want to say thank you for that. You're thank welcome. You. I don't think there's a reason for anybody to be rude. You mm -hmm. know, I know some people are. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I, I think rude people, they just do it to stroke their own egos. Yeah. 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 Especially in this industry. You right. Know, you see that a lot in this industry. You don't have so to be so rude. Yeah. It was really refreshing to have you uh, email me back. And I was a kid. See, I am nice. She did. She showed me so much love. <laughs> so that was cool. I uh, love it. I wanted to start with your upbringing and kind of get people to know you off air. You know, you're a person when you put these mics down and you're a person when these cameras go off. Right. What was your upbringing like and what was your family life like early on growing up? Um, I come from a single parent, mm -hmm. uh, single family home, I should say. Uh, my dad was in and out of prison, mm -hmm. to Hatchby, Wayside, you know, um, my family's from Compton. So we just, you know, it was that lifestyle that we just happened to fall into. Um, my dad was, you know, drug dealing, gang banging. Um, my mom had to make the decision to raise us by herself and she dropped out of school, but she, uh, she learned really fast that mm -hmm. she needs an education. Mm -hmm. So she went back, she got her GED and then she went to college and she got her degree and, uh, and it really instilled in me and my sister that, uh, she didn't want to take away from us, you know, having a man in our life when we grew up, but she also wanted to prepare us. And she said, I'm always going to prepare you that if you have a significant other, that's somebody you love, you want to have, but that's not somebody you're going to lean on. You should be able to bring something to the table as well. Mm -hmm. So she always taught us about education and just kind of furthering. Like if we didn't know anything, go sign up, go learn, take a seminar, you know, mm -hmm. educate yourself. Wow. So it's kind of my, you know, my background, uh, obviously, single family home. So we was on food stamps, you know, yeah. it, it is what it is. Uh, we grew up really uh, struggling financially. I remember my mom didn't have money to buy us uh, new school uh, shoes. And I had grown out of the shoes and she didn't get paid for another two weeks. And yeah. I only had one pair. And she was like, okay, what are we going to do? You don't fit in them. And so my mom put Vaseline on my feet yeah. and shoved my feet into the shoes. Yeah. And that's what I had to do for two weeks until she got her paycheck and she was able to buy her shoes again. Wow. So it just, you learn to, to you know, 
um, to stretch the dollar. You learn to um, get what's you know necessary, and you also learn how to be a hustler yeah. because you like nice things, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't have the money for nice things, so I had to work extra hard, and I understood that hard work, you know, equaled success. Mm -hmm. Here I am now. Wow, that's awesome. I, I, I just um, did a lot of research on you, and I noticed that your mom was like a significant figure in your Oof. life. Like, she meant everything. I am you. my mother's daughter. Yeah. yeah, so my mom has uh, recently suffered eight strokes. Um, I am, me and my sister and my niece, we all take turns uh, being her uh, home care provider. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we take turns is because... Um, obviously I'm in the radio. I do my appearances and my hosting. Uh, my sister, you know, is a mom and she works full time. So it, it takes a village. And if you don't really understand what it is to take care of a parent that has so, they need so much of your time and they need so much help. Uh, it's a lot mentally, physically, emotionally draining. So right now she's with my sister and then this weekend I have my carne asada mm. and then I'll take mom back with me and then she'll be with me for about a week and a half. So we always trade off, mm. but um, yeah, I can't, I cannot survive. And, and I think that's the common goal with me, my sister, is that we're really good at taking care of my mom. Well, my sister's a nurse, mm. but we're really good about taking care of my mom because even though me and my sister are financially independent, um, we are both very successful we have come to the realization, we've had conversations, is that we're still emotionally dependent on my mom. Mm. So how my mom's attitude and her happiness, it really dictates ours. If my mom is upset that day mm. or she's a little emotional that day, then I get emotional and I'm easy to cry. Mm -hmm. Like even right now, I could feel it coming on because I'm just thinking about it. But if my mom's happy and she's having a good day, then I'm happy too. So I, it, my emotions kind of range with hers. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, yeah, we're just so tight. And having eight strokes, it kind of um, kicks off memory loss. Mm -hmm. So sometimes she'll she'll lose you know track of certain things. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, helping her walk. And I said, Mom, you forget a lot of things. And she goes, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you ever forget that I'm your daughter? Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, no, baby. I know that in my heart. Wow. And I was like, ah, oh, here come the tears. Yeah, the water yeah, works. The water works but uh, my mom plays a significant role. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, though, I've always been gung-ho about working, working, working. And, and work is always first. Um, but now, because of, you know, my mom... A lot of things um, take a back seat, mm -hmm. and for me to get out the house now, it has to make more sense for me mm -hmm. because I'm I'm like giving up time with her, you know. And I know from the eight strokes that whatever time she has, you know what I mean, Absolutely. is precious. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it puts it in perspective. For Very you. much so. I want to take it back to the early stages of your career. Um, you came out to the Inland Empire and it had a yes. significant impact on your career. I did. I'm from the Inland Empire, so shout I out to the IE. Yes. yes. So. Could you tell me about that? What was yeah, that? so I started at Wild 96, and it was Wild 96 nonstop hip-hop and R&B. And um, I started radio there. And it's so crazy because we were a competition for 99.1 KGGI, and we used to have, like, this radio beef. And now me and ODM are, like, really close friends. Uh, shout out to ODM. Shout out to ODM, man. He puts on for the IE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's a freaking legend. Yeah, like, yeah, I, super yeah, super legend. Um, so I started radio there and I was there for five years and I just basically conquered everything that I could and I learned and I soaked up and then I went to Vegas and then I did radio out there for another five years, mm. five, six years. Um, but the IE is where we moved from LA to the IE and so that's where I started radio and I loved it. And to be honest, I still love the IE. Sometimes I, I'm on Zillow looking for homes. There you go. <laughs> I love the IE still. But um, no, I got a lot of love there. And then to come back and from Vegas and to do radio in LA was a dream come true mm -hmm. because this is where my family came from. Yes, yeah. You know what I mean? So the fact that I get to do radio in my own backyard mm -hmm. is like a dream mostly. A lot of radio personalities have to move out. Yeah. To go and to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, sometimes they try to come back home. I've been blessed enough to be able to come back home. I want to ask you, was it harder being a woman and, you know, you being a minority like being a woman, is it harder to Absolutely. get into this industry? And, and what was those challenges and what was it like? It was a lot. Um, one, you know what I'm saying? Uh, being Mexicana in a hip hop industry, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and being Mexican, being a woman, and I'm not a size one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I am a thick, proud girl so you know it just I didn't feel like I fit in it was that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. where you are like I'm part of the culture but 
this part of the culture just looks shiny and pretty, you know what I mean? And I don't really fit into, you know, their views of what I am until I really grew into who I was. And then I was like, look, I am part of the culture. And, th and this is, uh, this is what people look like. Yeah. You know what I mean? They look more like me. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, what, what is the the issue in those three things that you named? Like, why? You know, you said... Mm, I think kind. sometimes because I'm not maybe as, like, skin on Instagram, if you will. Oh, you know I what I mean? You. Yeah. And they're looking for that in entertainment? You maybe, think? yeah. But I, but also, too, I prove my... I, I, I've proven my, my worth by my work ethic, mm -hmm. um, by the interviews that I have done. Yeah. Um, there's nothing too gossipy on my interviews. Um, that's not what I'm about. Mm -hmm. I'm not... Um, I don't... I'm not a shock jock. I am not a clickbait. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care about clout. Uh, when it, artists come in, they feel so safe with me because... What you do personally is none of my business. When you come into this studio, what you're doing for the culture, mm -hmm. how you're contributing to the culture, and what you're doing to the community that supports you is really what I want to know about. And so they love that. You know what I mean? So I think that um, my work stands out and I just grew into who I was. And I was like, look, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the more I embraced myself, people just embrace me. You know what I mean? So you just, you can tell when people are authentic and when they're, you know, genuine as to somebody that's trying to pretend that they're not. Well, you could, especially as a man, you could see another man in like five seconds. You can tell, you can read yeah, them. Yeah. You feel me? Same you know thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I just kind of grew into who I was and mm -hmm. I learned that, uh, not everybody is like me and I have something that's special and what is really special is my upbringing. You know what I mean? Is, you know, my family being from Compton, us moving before, you know, I sat down with my mom, we talked about all the schools I went to and we were listing all the schools from tiny tot until 12th grade. I literally went to 13 different schools before I graduated. And so we moved around Linwood, Watts, Compton. I mean, we were in San Fernando Fra Valley for a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, in Southgate. Uh, it was just really like whoever could house us, you know what I mean? Cause my parents were divorcing and my mom was trying to get back into school and still juggle taking care of two girls by herself. Uh, so yeah, so I think that my upbringing is, has really contributed to, um, what I, what I'm doing and the fact that I'm proud of it, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't embarrass me that I grew up on food stamps and that I lived in a trailer in Watts and, you know, my dad was in and out of prison. That doesn't embarrass me. Um, I was loved, you know, uh, my dad would hurt anybody that would touch me, you know, um, my mom, you know, put herself through school and, and did that by herself because she loved us so much and she wanted to show us mm -hmm. what it is to be an example. So I still was. I was loved so much and I was, um, I was revered by my family that I'm not embarrassed by that. Yeah, like, it I, like you, you had a lot of confidence and still have a lot yes, of Yes, I do. And I always think that coming from poverty, I come from poverty. Right. That I always felt that if I can make it with nothing and I get to this place, then there's nothing anybody could tell right. me at this point. I've exactly. It possible, and right? I've learned how to live with less. Yes, I'm okay yes, with yes, that. Yes, yes. You know, I want to ask you on the business side of the industry, how did that confidence affect you in business negotiations when well, now you're at this place where you've done a few things and you have a little bit of a name for yourself and you I'm sure are thinking I need a little more respect in there's no more internships right no more internships right you know affect you in the business negotiations as well as being a woman in those right negotiations. you know what I I was around certain people in in radio that I was privy to um negotiation deals mm -hmm. um I worked with different men in radio. I, I got to shout out Tattoo. Tattoo was on uh, Big Boy's Neighborhood on Power 106. And Tat left Big's Neighborhood. He left Power at the time and he came to K-Day. This is before um, now K-Day and Power are, this, are uh, sister stations. But before then, he left and he came to K-Day. And the first week, it was so funny. The first week I worked with him, I walked out of the studio. I was like, y'all can't pay me enough to work with this crazy ass <laughs> dude. Right? Then we built and now he's like my brother. Mm. And I think he's probably like, I always tell everybody, he's probably one of the most creative radio personalities I've ever met in my entire career. Wow. Entire career. Tattoo. You can sit a bunch of radio personalities down and at, come up with a, a Valentine's mm -hmm. idea. We'll sit there and I'm coming, I'm trying and I'm thinking about it. Tell I'll have 25 right then and there, just off the top. Just creative. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but I got to see the confidence that he had and I saw the belief that he had and it just kind of like working with him on the morning show every day kind of rubbed off on me mm. and then once I started seeing the impact that I was making I think it really took me to sit there and look in the mirror and be like yo see you're fucking dope mm -hmm. you're dope bro like what you've gone through and I really had to tell myself that and I was like and then I saw younger women coming to me wanting me to mentor them yeah. and that kind of you know gave me the confidence one because I'm such a fighter for the underdog yeah. such a fighter for the underdog so when I see these girls coming in and they may not have as much confidence or they're getting a little bullied and stuff I go into protective mode and I'm like I got you mm -hmm. don't trip um so I think that helped me along the way and just the accolades that I have acquired. Um, I realized I sat back probably and I'll, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't even think I say this too much on camera at all. I sat back over 10 years ago and I was on social media and I was looking at every talent if, uh, across the board, every radio talent. And I was going to their Instagram, I was going to their account and I sat there one day and I, did, I just did a deep dive research. And it was like, what's missing? Because they're doing so many amazing things mm -hmm. and it's just dope. But there's something missing and I don't know what it is and I got to put my finger on it. So I'm going through everything, 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 the community. Mm. There was a lot of pop culture, a lot of entertainment. and But I was like, oh, that's where I can go in. Mm -hmm. That's an untapped market and mm -hmm. I love the community. This is easy. Mm -hmm. It's almost like God was like shining a light like, Cece, I got you. And um, I just really dove into the community and really uh, started doing a couple of events. And then I just started seeing the help that the community needed. Mm -hmm. And it just like, I don't know, it just worked for me. It just it, like, I love people. And when people are hurting or people need help, like I will figure it out. Yeah. That's one thing that's really good about me is that I will fucking figure it out I don't tell anybody I don't know if I don't know let me get back to you I'm gonna figure this out how to help you so I started doing food drives and I started doing backpack giveaways and I started doing dinners and I would pay for like I would pay for different people's school supplies uh, quietly I, I didn't yeah, need to tell yeah. everybody this you know um, and it just helped out and then once it just started flourishing I'm like okay this is cool this is what we're doing uh, a couple years ago I held a back a backpack school drive in collaboration with somebody else mm -hmm. um, and a mother had hit us up on the phone lines and she said hey Cece I have two kids and I'm a single parent if I take them can they get school supplies but here's the question I have for you I'm single parent I'm struggling I'm going back to school because I want to better my life do you think I could get some school supplies too for my college and I said yeah come on through mm -hmm. so she came through there was a separate line I didn't realize that when she got to that line, um, they had turned her away and they said it's only for the kids. So she came up to my booth and she's like, it's okay, but they said it was only for the kids. And that bothered me because I made her drive down. So I said, what's your Zell? I'm going to mm -hmm. Zell you. And I Zelled her a certain amount and I said, "I this is me. I'm Zelling you uh, for your school supplies because, and she's like, you know what I said? I know, but I feel bad. You got in your car. You're a single parent. You drove down here. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand, you know, what it takes. Let me zell you. So I zelled her, and that was it. She was thankful. Okay, you know, then I go on to doing everything that I do, you know, working and stuff. A couple years, you know, have passed. Literally, maybe two months ago, mm -hmm. she DMs me on Instagram her certificate. Wow. And she said, I want you to remember, and I, I wanted to show you this because you were the one that gave me my school supplies. I graduated. Wow. Yeah. I was like, wow, I was like, oh my God, I was sitting here and I wanted to cry and I'm like, this is why I do what I do. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? This is what it is to give back because you never know whose life you're changing. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to, to give. And, and I think that I am, um, I think the way I show love is service to others. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just who I am. My mom was like that. I'm like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of what has helped me in the community and the community has always defended me always got me always supported me but I've always given back and I've always been very good with no matter what radio station I'm with I always tell them you cannot 
go into these communities and expect them to pay for your concert tickets yeah. if you can't go in their community and help them. And show love. Yeah. yeah, you should be able to go show love. If I'm going to ask you to pay for tickets for the concerts, I should be able to walk into your they community. They got to feel like it's a relationship. Right, right it's, it's a give just, and take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that just even just me having a heart because mm -hmm. some people are like, Cece, you're so nice. You, you, you know, you do this, you do that. And it's just, it's just, I get it from my mom. I want it's to ask simple. you, I heard you speak about God a lot. What role has your relationship with God played on your life, your career, that thing that you want to just be involved in love on people? What, what is that? Well, I tell everybody because people will be like, oh, Cece Valencia, radio personality. And we don't hear a lot about that in entertainment. Yeah, anymore. but I, I will correct them and I say, I'm not Cece Valencia, the radio personality. I'm Cece Valencia, the Christian who happens to be a radio personality, Amen. Amen. you know, and uh, that was taught for me from my family. Um, my uncle's a pastor. I have a couple of uncles that are pastors. Uh, my family is very deeply uh, into, you know, I don't want to say religious, but they're deep into their faith. We have a church in Santa Ana and it's non-denominational. Like okay. it doesn't matter if you just, if you're hurting, come through. It doesn't know we don't judge. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I really do. Um, I love the fact that I was, you know, I've always been in, God has always been instilled with me. Jesus has always been instilled with me, uh, never to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, um, I know that this is not this is not it like we're not of this world mm -hmm. you know what i mean we're here for a short a short amount of time and i know when i go meet my maker i know the one question he's going to ask going to ask everybody what did you do when i put you on earth right. what did you do to save souls right. that is the reason why we're here i could get super deep but i i feel like me contributing to the community and helping that's my way uh, of helping and being a servant to others Amen. And I have this huge platform and I can use it for good. And, and I do, you know, and and it's worked for me. And, and listen, the world's a hurting place right now. So if we can have a little bit more love in our hearts and a little bit more uh, empathy for others. Why not? Hey, man. Uh, um, I want to ask you now. I want to get into some Yeah, let's topics, go. Right? Let's get some fun topics. Who are three people that you've met in your career, interview, met in passing, or you just saw and you were like, oh, my God, I cannot believe that the girl from Compton is standing in front of this person. Who are those three people? Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. Ice Cube, Lazy Bone, mm -hmm. with a bonus of me working for Jennifer Lopez. Wow. It's yeah. it West Coast heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and J-Lo, when I worked for J-Lo, that was awesome. I was like, oh my God, it was in my car. And I was like, I'm like, I work for J-Lo, what? Um, What's your best J-Lo story? Man, my best J-Lo story is when I got hired I have two. I got hired, um, and I was I seen everybody on this show, and all you know, you walk into the to the network, and you see all the other TV radio personalities, and they're literally like this, right? And they look so perfect. They look like they <laughs> stepped out of a magazine, and I'm like, oh shit! I didn't lose weight. I just went to dams. You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy. So I started losing weight like crazy. Started losing weight. Started losing weight, and I slimmed down a little bit. And then they seen me at the production, and they were like, AC. They were like, are you losing weight? And I'm like, yeah, are you proud of me? Like, I'm, I'm going to compete. Like, I'm so happy that you guys gave me this opportunity. I will not let you down. I'm, I'm polishing myself up. And they said, no, 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 no. Mm. More people that are watching the show look like you than them. Wow. We got you for who you were, and we love who you were. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it kind of helped me there. That's so and then Jennifer invited everybody to her house, and we had a barbecue. And... I think that I see her as this huge, like, international, global icon that when I saw her at home, and you hear all the reports of, oh, my God, Jenna's so rude, and she's in that. I've never experienced that. And at her, at her house, I was sitting there, and that's where I had a moment. I'm like, oh, my God, the girl from Compton, I used to go visit her dad in Tehachapi, <laughs> right, in a regal, like, right. on food stamps. Right. I'm sitting at Jennifer Lopez's house. This is so crazy. And she came out, and she was so sweet to everybody, and she made sure everybody ate. She made sure you were good. She would sit down and talk to you. She So I just got to see a side that was so different than what I would hear about. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But then again, like, I don't pay attention to those things. Because I feel like everybody wants to talk so negative about somebody sometimes. Yeah. So it was awesome. And then I think when I met Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. that was my ultimate, too. I yeah, was like, oh, my God, Snoop. And now, like, 
Snoop's like a family friend now. It's crazy, awesome. right? And I'm just like, this is nuts. Like, I used to listen to this guy thinking that I would never in a million years ever meet him. Yeah. Yeah. Snoop is one of those lovable guys. If yes. anybody has a problem with Snoop, we have a problem with you. Right, How exactly. Could you not love Snoop, right? Exactly. Um, I saw that you interviewed LL Cool J. I, always, I wanted to ask you about that. He was what so was nice. like meeting LL Cool J? So LL, that's the original yes. goal. So LL was super nice. Mm -hmm. I, I interviewed him on a Zoom because he was in New York, mm -hmm. but he um, released his new album. So I went to his listening party and there were so many people swarming him and um, security guards were pushing people off and stuff. And I'm like, oh no, I need to get my photo. <laughs> Real hustler. And then I got my picture and I was like, I don't know if you remember me, L, mm -hmm. but I interviewed you a couple weeks ago and he looked at me and he's like... <laughs> He said who you are yeah. and i was like oh my god yeah. so i got all excited i was like that's dope because we all grew up to around the way girl yep, i yep, need love yep. you know um super nice uh very humble I, I would say that a lot of the artists that are legacy artists are very humble and down to earth um i think the artists that are new mm -hmm. is are the ones that sometimes have this facade of like oh i'm this big person and mm -hmm. you and it's not really it's so not like yeah and it's funny yeah, because it's funny. You'll see somebody, you're like, this is a legacy artist. And mm -hmm. they don't even act like that. I interviewed him, too, um, at the BET Awards when I first started doing radio. And Snoop was there. And Snoop was surrounded by 30 people, like bodyguards, all kind of entourage. So I couldn't get to him. And I remember I was sitting there. It was my first BET coverage. And I was like, fuck, they're going to fire me from radio. They mm -hmm. sent me here, and I didn't get one interview. Like, how horrible of a talent am I? So, because everybody kept saying, no, no. And I wasn't as aggressive. I was new. Mm -hmm. So the girl that was with me was like, well, there's LL. And I was like, oh, my God. And she's like, well, the worst you can say is no. Everybody else said no, you know. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. So I went up to him, and I was so new. And I was like, LL, I'm Cece from Wild 96. Can I interview you this? And he was like, yeah. Gave me a dope interview. And then when I interviewed him here, I told him. And I was, and my interviews were different. Like, over there, I was a little bit nervous, stuttering, because I was brand new. And here, <laughs> I was super polished. And I'm like, this is crazy. It's like 21 years later, mm -hmm. I'm interviewing you again. This That's is awesome. nuts, bro. And I told him, I said, and I want you to know you were the only one that gave me an interview. You were the only one that was down to earth. Everybody like pushed me, me aside. Like, yeah. I like me and your story. No. I, started this. <laughs> I want that. This is my last celebrity question, because this is your interview. But no. I, this is my hero, Ice Cube, my hero. So I, I love wanted, Ice Cube. Tell me an Ice Cube story. Okay. Is so, he as cool as I think he is? Super. Everybody I know love Ice Cube. That's amazing. who I model after. So. He's amazing. Yeah. So I had him come in when they did Mount Rushmore. And it was Cube, um, I want to say 40, mm -hmm. uh, short. short, and I don't know if there was somebody else. But we were all talking. And it, during the interviews, I, when I have an idea, like I'll just run with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, we were talking. I said, oh, wait a minute. Let me interrupt you guys. I have an idea. And I, I tend to forget a lot, too. I was like, mm -hmm. so let me tell you while I, I have it. And he's like, what's up? And I was like, you guys are all from the West Coast. You're all legacy artists. I was like, people look up to you their entire life, mm -hmm. right? I said, and we have a lot of untapped talent out here in Southern California and E40 in the Bay. Mm -hmm. How come you guys don't do something where you do a Mount Westmore scholarship mm. and you bless somebody who can't afford it and now you help them and now you have a hand in helping the new West Coast artists? And he said, done. CC looking done. out for the people, man. I did. Yeah. Here we go. Sorry. Let's go. I'm going. I'm in the mix. Oh, okay, there. I just got out. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, he was like, done. Yeah. It's done. I said, for real? And he said, yeah. And then I uh, went to one of their music videos and I seen it and I'm like, hey. I just want to remind you, you do the scholarship, right? Mm -hmm. And you say, yeah, we're working on it. I say, yes. So, like, the fact that little old me, he took my advice and he wasn't like, oh, I'm Ice Cube. I don't need your advice. Like, he understood that it's for the people and it helps, you know. So, he was really, really nice yeah. and down to earth and Snoop. And then Lazy's just, like, family. Yeah. Like, I feel like, I don't know if it's Midwest thing, mm -hmm. but Bone Thugs is so down to earth. They're like your cousins mm -hmm. just hanging out. It's crazy. That's dope. A yeah. lot of people don't get to see that side of celebrities. I had to ask the Ice Cube. Question. Yeah, That's no, Cube was super. He's super cool, and it's so funny because like everybody that meets him, they're nervous at first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To like. And then it's like an uncle. Yeah, yeah, to ask for a picture or something, they get yeah. so nervous with him. But he's just so down to earth. That's awesome. I want to ask you. You've met so many successful people. You've met people in all walks of life, from all walks of life, and from different areas of the country as right. well. What do you think is a common thing that most successful people have that makes them successful? Ooh, one, um, you don't stop. You gotta be consistent. 
um, you might be working at doing something and it might flop. It may not get which the response you want. Just keep doing it no matter what because it'll grow. Uh, two, I will say this, and I've, I've t like a lot of different you know interns that I've had and assistants. I always tell them, like what's gonna save your ass a lot of the time is learn how to read the room. Yeah. Like you gotta learn how to read the room. You gotta know when to ask something, when not to ask something, when it's a good time, when it's not. A lot of times people will ask for something at the most inconvenient time and they don't know how to read the room and that's what really kind of set them back. You know what I mean? I always tell them, learn how to read the room. If you can learn how to read the room, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but be very consistent. Uh, you know, if things don't grow as, as it should, uh, learn from it and, and make it bigger and make it better and just keep doing it no matter what mm -hmm. and Figure out a way to learn every single day figure out a way. Uh, it's funny. I have a personal story So I was watching this uh, documentary on Netflix. It's with Bill Gates. It's AI mm -hmm. And my fiance I was like are you into AI? And I was like no, but I need to learn because they might take my job mm -hmm. <laughs> So I need to figure this shit out. I don't I know anything about AI, it. but I'm gonna learn about yeah. it so I'm always willing to learn mm -hmm. and to uh, figure out different ways. And, and I always try different things. You know I love I mean? to hear this from you because I speak to high school students all the time. I go to the schools and speak. And these are the same things that I tell them about being success. And I want them to yeah. hear it from other people. So it's not just bro big brother Will. No, yeah. And, and really just have the confidence in yourself yeah. and understand that. I hate the term haters. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hate that. People be like, oh, you have your haters. You have your haters. They don't hate you. Because to hate somebody, like for me, if I got, if I hate you, you got to do something to my family. Mm -hmm. You got to do something to me for me to hate you. So they don't hate you, they envy you. Mm -hmm. So they're envious and, and, and they don't know how to do what you're doing. So it's frustration yeah. for them. You know what I mean? It's really so, love. They just turned it back internal. Right. So I tell people that I'm like, don't worry about the negative responses that you get. Because a lot of times um, when it's your vision... It's just what that is. It's your vision. People don't understand it sometimes. You can explain and you'll be like, how come these people aren't supporting me? How mm -hmm. come they're not jumping on board? They don't understand your vision. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is when you do something and they see it, then you hear, oh, now everybody wants some help. Mm -hmm. Now everybody wants to participate because they saw your vision. They understood mm -hmm. it now. So I've learned that a long time ago where I don't get, and I think that's helped me. I don't get, uh, I don't take it personal. I think that's, that's a good point. I want to stop there right. on that point. Taking your emotions out of doing business. Right. How important is that? So important. It's what's really going to keep you afloat. You've got to leave the emotions behind, you know. And that's what we always say. It's not emotions. It's about facts. And when I'm doing an event, I've had an event. And, and I've literally still to this day had events where certain people didn't show up. And I'm like, y'all didn't support me. <laughs> but then what I realized is they didn't really get it. They didn't understand it. And now that they see it, now guess what? They understand it. They get it. And now they want to help and I still and I will still get them involved because all it is is just a growing family so I, I'm very um, aware of things like that and I always tell my my nieces and stuff if, if it's your vision they're not gonna know it until you build it yeah I build it and that. they will come uh -huh. the, yeah the most important things I think are leverage and proof of concept right when you have leverage then things change and we have proof of concept you can get leverage right and you know it's so funny I did an event um, in uh, Oakland recently and it, it, there was one night that we did something really dope and it was awesome and then they had me come the next day to this uh, uh, like a little fair and it, it was a little bit of a flop mm -hmm. and the girl was like oh my god because it didn't turn out the way and I was like it's okay it's proof of concept mm -hmm. it, you're just showing everybody what the concept is right. and next year it's gonna grow even bigger but you it won't grow if you stop mm -hmm. keep doing it don't get disappointed keep going you know so Things like that, I still take it, and I and I still will like be like, this could be such a great concept. Like, don't stop because I see the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain people that um, I've done you know concerts, and it's not maybe not as successful as they thought it would be. And I'm like, it's okay. I see your vision. I see what you're doing, and what you're doing is going to be freaking huge. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's really what it is all about. Can you give people advice on taking opportunities when money isn't attached to it? Because being an intern for a year is no joke. That's a year of full-time work. Can you teach people about sometimes the opportunity doesn't have a paycheck attached to it, but it's going to get you to the right. next step? And sometimes you got to invest in yourself. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people, and I understand it, where they won't do it unless it's paid. But there's some things that you've got to do if you don't have the contacts. 
I've done a lot to get my foot through the door. Now I know my worth. Now I've worked so hard, but I've earned it. You got to earn that situation. So when people come in and they don't have a huge resume and they don't want to do anything for free or, you know, put in their time, then it's like, well, your passion's not here. Mm -hmm. Your passion's here. And mm -hmm. for this, it's not really this. Because you're going to have to do a lot of work in the entertainment industry before you start seeing the, the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you really just have to be passionate about what you're doing. But why wouldn't you want to be like whatever it is you're doing? Don't you want to be passionate about mm -hmm. it? Who wants to be doing something that they completely hate? Yeah. You know, so I say if it's a great opportunity, weigh it out. Weigh it out. Will this help me? Will I be able to pull some contacts? You know, will I be able to pull a gig out of this? You know, there will be certain gigs like I've done some political gigs that, you know, I've had to like weigh my fee. And I'm like, oh, and I'm not a political person, but I'm like, you know, I'm not doing too much political, just hosting and introducing some stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bite my tongue because I need to get in that room full of all those people. Mm. And I will leave with five paying gigs. There you go. People be like, oh my God, you were awesome. You're oh, you were this and that. So I weigh the options. That one free gig that I gave them, I just walked out with five big pain mm -hmm. gigs. It was worth it, it for was me. Worth it. Yeah, because now I'm going to keep doing it. And now this is longevity. And the people hire me over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I do weigh out my options. Um, when I started out, I would do it. Um, now I'm blessed enough where I don't have to do that so much. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, but I get it and I, I understand like it's a it's a sticky situation But if you can do it take the opportunity because they don't come very often and How important is relationships? Very important very important. Um, I tend not to get involved in the industry uh, Cheese man the industry mm -hmm. gossip. I'm very good about staying away from that one thing about me is you'll notice uh, if Anybody that knows me knows that if I go to an event I go in there and I give you my two hours and I'm out. That's me. Like I yeah, I go in there and I'm like, all right, I give you a couple hours and I dip. I don't get involved in any of the heat. You don't session. drink either. I, heard. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. I don't either. drink either. either. Yeah, so I've, I don't make a fool out of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not there. You know, I, I'm not like, oh, CC was wasted and didn't know nothing like that, because I know that when we're at a certain level in our life, um, all eyes are on us. Yes. You know, so I, I'm very conscious of that. But yeah, no, I don't drink. But I go in there and I do my thing and I network and then I'm out. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's that has given keeping my relationships with people. I don't get involved. Yeah. And so when people try, you know, I've I've had promoters. Oh, this promoter. I said, leave me out of it. Mm -hmm. Leave me out of it. I don't. It hasn't been doing me. Yeah. I don't want to hear you talking about this promoter. I don't want to hear this promoter talking about you. Just it's not anything to do with me. I come in. I do my job. Being successful and and working in a space that you're very public uh, for so long. How do you deal with entitlement? From people that actually knew you before you became successful or has you know known it's, you for a you long know what? time. It's crazy. You There's no entitlement with the people that know me. I think the people that mm. know me love me and they understand it. It's entitlement with people that don't know me. Mm. And so uh, that's hard to deal with. I recently, a few months ago, I, I shut off my DMs. Um, you, can, you can message me, but you have to go through the profile. You can't go off of the Insta story. Mm -hmm. um, I shut it down because the entitlement with certain people that didn't even know me was I, I've always they're always asking me for money yeah so and it's hard because I'm like y'all I have a mother that I take care of like yeah, what yeah. I need you to give me money and like I'm I gotta pay for, for stuff it. yeah and I'm working for it like I gotta pay for shit you know um but I think that's what it is it's not really the people in my life and it's not my family believe it or not my family is the last people to ask for anything because they know they see it mm -hmm. they'll be with me and they'll see the entitlement of other people of what oh cc can you do this for me oh cc mm -hmm. i need this and so my family has always been very aware like we don't want you to feel like that you're here your family you're just with us so i don't get that from my family i get it from strangers and i get like oh you know my car broke down and i'm i'm going to court you know with my baby mom or something can you lend me ten thousand for a new car and i'm like bro i don't even know you i get that all the time you know what i mean it's just it's the most off things and it's like there's no common sense sometimes yeah. nowadays they say common sense but not everybody has it yeah you know so those are i think that's where i kind of try to pull myself away sometimes mm -hmm. and people were like oh you shut off your 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 comments and your dms because the I listeners the will thing. know and they'll say, and they'll be like, did somebody come at you? And I'm like, no. I was like, I don't get a lot of hate. I mm. get asked a lot of favors. Yep. And sometimes it's so hard for me to like be like, 
Because you got a big heart. Too. Yeah, I got a like, big I, heart. I want to give to everybody. But then but sometimes I'm like, how do you go to somebody you don't even know and ask for money like that, bro? Yes, yeah, like it no doesn't. Shame. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing. I, it's that's the weirdest shit for me, at least. Yeah, yeah. What's what's something else in the entertainment space that you like? I didn't think I would be dealing with this when I came in, but this is this is weird. Like this is I don't know if it's just because I'm a girl from Compton or if I'm just not used to this business, but this is some weird stuff that goes on that I don't want to be involved in. That's just common uh, to to the business. I think I think what I deal with that I didn't think I was going to deal with a lot is having to be a tough girl in this business. Um, I'm a little tough. I'm a tough cookie, and I think that my skin is very thick. Um, and I am, I, I, I'm a pusher. Like I, if I want something, I push, I'll make mountains. I've, I've done that. I will make shit happen. I didn't think I had to be as strong, but I've learned that in this business, you don't have a lot of people supporting you mm. and hear what I say. Please don't take my words and misscrew them. Radio personalities, we're all friends, but you have to be smart about it. Think about it. We're all radio personalities, so we're all friends. We're all competitional because mm -hmm. we're all radio personalities, mm -hmm. and we all need our show to be at number one. Mm -hmm. We all need our ratings to be good, right? So even though we support each other, you know what I mean. I'll support you, but I don't want you to beat me on air. I want to whip your ass on air. But out there, I'm your homegirl. You know what I mean? So I didn't realize that one. It is a very tough industry, and it's a it's a doggy doggy dog world, and it's cutthroat. Mm -hmm. And that's what radio is. I, I feel like that's just what this entertainment industry is. Not everybody is your friend. Um, and my my ex boss had told me this, and he made it very clear. He's like, see, people want to see you succeed. They want to see you do good, just not better than them. Yeah. And I've learned that, and that is so very, very true. There's a lot of people in this business that want to see you do good, just not better than them. Mm -hmm. And that's when you pick and choose, and you very selective about your tribe. You know what I mean? And my tribe is very small, strong, successful women, but very, very small. I do have a lot of friends, but there's only a handful that I can really concentrate, that I really can say are my really close friends. And that's because in this business, you have to learn how to be tough. You've yeah. got to learn how to be tough. Somebody's willing to, um, there's somebody right now, and I and I tell this to my assistants, like, this is why we got to be on it. There's somebody right now that is more hungry, mm -hmm. that is probably better looking, that is willing to do whatever they can to take our seats right now. So we can't give up, give up our seats because there's a hundred people that want to move in right now. So we always got to be on top of our game. We always got to be better. We always got to improve. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I, I did radio before social media. There was only MySpace. Mm -hmm. I had to learn about Instagram. I had to learn about Twitter. And trust me, I was eye rolling when I was learning. I got on Twitter and they were like, oh, there's this thing called Instagram. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> one more? God, you know, like yeah. how many more do we have to do? Why can't there just be one? Yeah. You know, but I had to learn it. And then there was uh, Snapchat after that. And mm -hmm. then I was like, I'm not learning that. Isn't that for naked people? Yeah. Uh, but they were like, no. Then I learned about TikTok. And I'm like, there's another platform. We have to do it, though. We have to learn. We have to research if we still want to continue in this business. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn. Do I like posting all the time? No, I don't. I really don't. But I do it because I'm in this business. And sure. this is the business that I'm in, you mm -hmm. know. So relations, relationships are everything. But also to pick and choose your relations. And it's okay. And I want to say this, to to people that are watching. It's okay that if there's somebody that you you like and you're, you're cool but you're not too sure if they're a good working relationship it's okay to love them from across the street mm. you know there's certain people that I have in my tribe that are in my inner circle that I will work with and I will share with and there's certain people that I still will kind of work with but not too much I keep them at a distance mm -hmm. but I still love them across the street nothing gotcha. there's nothing wrong with that gotcha. what's the biggest loss that you took throughout your life or your career that maybe even changed you to you know make you more successful Ooh, my biggest loss. Um, I, I have to say I've been blessed to not really have any. I think this the biggest loss has been my mom having the strokes. Yeah. I think that um, it really changed my view on life. I was very much a work workaholic, very much a career woman, uh, very much about uh, making money, and uh, and really. Uh, getting ahead in life and I think the biggest loss is that I put 
my family on the back burner. So I did that because I really wanted to throw myself into my career and really soak up game and knowledge. And I knew I needed to do it to get ahead. But when my mom had the strokes, I think it put everything in perspective. And so I think that was the biggest thing for me was that I was like, you know what? Screw everything else. It's always going to be about family now. You know, and I will do whatever I can to make sure that my family understands that I love them. They're first. I can't breathe without them. And that... I feel bad that I put my work over them for 10 years. I did it, and my family never complained one time. They never said anything. They were so understanding because they understood that I needed to do what I had to do to get ahead. So I come from a really amazing family. My family's so special, and now that, you know, my mom is, you know, eight strokes, but she's still doing good. You know, she still has a sense of humor. So I think we've rallied around that, and it's just a beautiful thing. And my mom's from Compton, so I can show you. I'll get a random text message, and guess what she'll tell me? They not like us. Ah. I said, okay, Rita. <laughs> okay, Rita. Like, I just laugh at her. And I'm having my carne asada this weekend, and I, I, I was like, Mom, I'm going to make you a carne asada t-shirt so you can wear Oh, no, no, I'm going to wear my They Not Like Us shirt. She loved Kendrick. So mm -hmm. she always says that to me. And I'll get a random text message. They Not Like Us. And I'll be like, that's right, Mom. You know, but. God bless Yeah, mom. but I think the loss that I took. And, and that happens, you know. And then, and then thank God I, I had, you know, uh, you know, I had the knowledge, I guess, the wisdom to understand it. And to, and, and to realize that my family has to come first. You know what I mean? All this is amazing. But it's not amazing without them, you know. So and you're I, really you're like you're a legend. Oh, and, thank you. Um, I want to ask you: Is there is it possible to get to a place of success like one that you've gotten to with a, a healthy work life balance? Is that possible, or is it you know you're going to trade something off to be great? Say that again. Is it possible Sorry. to get to this place of success that you've come to, somebody that's become a legend, like you have? with the healthy work-life balance or is it like you have to work or you have to choose life you have to pick no 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 you can balance it out okay. absolutely you got to figure out what's important to you mm -hmm. and you got to decide what you want to do i have a great working relationship and i have a great work balance it took me a while to figure it out especially with mom and and having to figure out like okay this week i have her next week my sister has her well i have this appearance so you got to take her this week or i have to host this concert so it does take a a village and it takes a great calendar but i have uh both a very healthy personal relationship and then I have a, a, a healthy family relationship. You know, my fiance also shoots for Snoop Dogg, Warren G for the radio station. So he's busy too. And we've just learned to balance it and it works for us. Mm -hmm. But we center everything around God. We really, really do. Mm -hmm. He goes to church more than I do. Amen. You know? So, I mean, he's it's... He's a leader. He's a leader. He really is. He could come in at 4 o'clock in the morning from shooting and he'll be in church by 8. Like well, it's that's, crazy, that's yeah. So I mean, we we learn how to balance it, and 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 it's worked for me. I just learned that I got to learn to say. I got to learn to say no. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. it. I got to learn to say no. I can't do that if it's not befitting for me. If it doesn't work with my schedule with mom, it's okay. No, I've learned it, and and it's crazy. That's the one thing you will learn in this industry. Learn how to say no sometimes. That's it. You just got to learn, you know, how to pick and choose and set boundaries. But once you learn to set the boundaries and don't apologize for them, you're fine. And people know it. I tell people all the time, oh, if my phone's on silent, I have mom. Mm -hmm. um, you can text me. Mm -hmm. But I have my mom. And right now, I just want to sit with that lady and look at her. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, you could definitely have it. When people say, oh. Yeah, let's, uh, let's spin out. All right, for sure. Sorry, I'm just, let me just spin out really quick. No, you're good. Do you mind if I talk real quick? No, okay. Yeah, Can we talk really quick? Yeah, for sure. All right. It's 935 Gator Hip Hop back in the day. That's DJ Vital. DJ Vital.1200, okay? That's right, that's right. Hey, how you doing? It's Monday. Back to the grind, bro, bro. So listen, we are so excited. Uh, the Trunk or Treat is around the corner. We're going to be talking about that. But we got Not Scary Farm tickets coming up this hour. Have you been? Bro, are you serious? I'm going to make you go with like a GoPro. It's so scary. <laughs> I 
Hey, listen, we got Deasia out there in the streets with the afternoon pull-up. She's going to be hooking somebody up with Not Scary Farm tickets. Don't go anywhere. Keep it locked. Right here, 935K Day. Okay, sorry about that. It's like seeing how magic works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, no, you could definitely, though, um, balance it out. You just have to want to. Mm -hmm. And you got to be ballsy enough to set your boundaries. That's it. And people were respected. Yeah. I mm. feel like you gave me so much game. I'm did I really? Oh my yeah, god! I, I did, yes. I, feel like I should pay for this. No, 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 no. <laughs> so no, no, no. It's called each one teach one. Each one teach one. Yes. Each one teach one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I wanted to um, end it with this. This will be my last question to you. What piece of advice could you give? That this is the biggest piece of advice that, no matter what industry, no matter where you're going to go in life, if you were younger, uh, you would have told yourself this, with the experience that you have now. Believe in yourself. Sometimes when nobody believes in you and all you got is yourself, believe in yourself. And when you feel like you have to cry, because in this business you will feel like that sometimes and you will lose hope. It happens. Lean into God. That's what I do. When I got to fall, guess where I fall? On my knees into prayer. There it is. That's awesome. Thank hey, you so much, PCI. Thank you yes. so much. God bless your fiance. No, yes. God bless your mom and Thank your family you. and you as well. Thank you so much. And come to my garden inside. I would love to. I would okay, love to. Okay, we'll, Saturday. Saturday. We'll in be Pomona. there. In Pomona. The whole team will be there. Kind of IE a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Pomona, yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. We got we to gotta convince them that they IE. We're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said that one time and they literally bit my head off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, IE, Pomona. They're like, Salé. I was like, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. You got to yeah. let, them, let them have it, but... Yeah, yeah really they're holding on to that LA boundary. Yeah, I tell them y'all on Hope Boulevard. What do you right. mean? That's nine oh nine. They don't exactly. they hate me for it, but I love them. So, <laughs> no, thank, thank you, you guys. so much. Thank yes. you so much, CC. Urban Legend with Legends, y'all know what it is. Signing out, man. We out of here. CC Valencia, the legend. Let's go. <laughs>